until quite recently, finds of dinosaurs in Australia have been few and far between. The first find of an Australian dinosaur was a partial skeleton found on Cape York. Later named Agrosaurus. This small plant eater from the Triassic period was found during an exploration of the area by HMS Fly. It was not until 1980s and 1990s that the significant number of dinosaurs began to be excavated from Australia. These mainly came from excavations at Dinosaur Cove in Victoria and Lightning Ridge in New South Wales. Most of these fossils are from dinosaurs that are new to scientists and are still being studied. roamed the earth, there were few places where the right kinds of rocks were being dis deposited. Dinosaurs tend to be preserved in sediments laid down by rivers and lakes. During the region of dinosaurs, most of Australia was covered by shallow sea. Secondly, since the age of dinosaurs, there has not been much mountain building in Australia. If land is lifted up and eroded back, it is possible to see into the rock beds and find the fossils inside. Lastly, compared to many other places in the world, Australia has very few paleontologists looking for the fossils and a very large area to cover. This is slowly changing and the recent increase in dinosaur fossils finds is a result of more paleontologists getting out and digging around. During the age of dinosaurs, Australia was much closer to the South Pole than it is now. This meant that Australia was much cooler than it is today and there were long periods of darkness each year. Dinosaurs such as Leah Elinosaurus are small with large eyes. It is unlikely that they could have migrated in and out of what is now southern Victoria, so they must have been able to see in low light conditions and keep warm in long winters. Australia was also connected to Antarctica and South America during the time of dinosaurs. This allowed some movement of dinosaurs and other animals across continents that are now separated by vast oceans. Similarities between some Australian dinosaurs to others found on other southern continents indicate a long history of move movements back and forth between Australia and neighbouring continents. There is still no definite answer whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded. For many years, scientists thought that all dinosaurs were cold-blooded, like all reptiles are today. Then in 1970s, scientists began to look at some evidence indicating that dinosaurs may be warm-blooded. This evidence includes several things. The way dinosaurs stood straight-legged like mammals, the big rib cages that could have held mammal-like hearts and lungs, and bones that contain channels for quick blood circulation as found in warm-blooded animal bones. More recent studies, however, suggest that dinosaurs were neither warm-blooded nor cold-blooded, but something in between. Big dinosaurs may have not had much control over their body temperature, but probably didn't need to. Their huge size would have been very effective in insulating them from temperature fluctuations. Whatever the truth, it is clear that dinosaurs were active dynamic creatures and not just overgrown lizards. At the end of the Cretaceous period, all dinosaur families together with the pterosaur and marine reptiles as well as 75% of all species on Earth went extinct. There are numerous theories for this great extinction, but at present only three are taken seriously. Firstly, this may have been because the climate became much cooler and drier. 
Secondly, in India, huge volcanic eruptions unleashed enormous quantities of lava, volcanic ash and poisonous gas, which would have caused widespread climate change. Thirdly, at about the same time, a large asteroid struck the Earth, forming a 240-kilometre crater. This impact would have caused, among the other disasters, several extremely cold months or years because of the dust in the atmosphere. Evidence between the three theories is balanced and the debate rages on. But until more data is available, no positive judgement can be made.